I was just, I was just thinking with my half broken Italian. I think it's ciao, Andrea, come stai, right? Exactly. See, that's not excellent. too bad. <laughs> I'm saying excellent. I have no idea what you've just said, but hey. <laughs> I just said hi. How are you? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> We've got um on you today on Andrea. And um in classic rabbit hole story fashion, uh let's dive down your rabbit hole story first and see where the discussion takes us. All right. Well, first of all, guys, thanks for having me. Uh it's a great great My pleasure, pleasure to, be, to, to be on. Uh, with you and um, all right so let's see my rabbit hole stories uh, I think it starts back <laughs> in 2017 uh, hmm. basically I just graduated uh, got my bachelor uh, in uh, economics and finance and uh, uh, I started to do some uh, just for fun some trading on the Nasdaq and uh, when, when you do <laughs> that you got CNB <laughs> you got CNBC and uh, Bloomberg TV on, especially, you know, the, the first time you try to uh, see how these people think, etc. So, um, mm -hmm. I saw after a couple of weeks that I was tuning in on a daily, um, on a daily basis, I saw this Bitcoin, uh, I saw the Bitcoin price next to the price of gold, right? And I, I thought it was a prank, you know. I, I went like CNBC. <laughs> they must they must be pranking us or something. Um, and after that, I saw a whole segment on Bitcoin and blockchain because you know we are in the summer of 2017, and the price was around two thousand dollars, something like that. Uh, and that was the uh, the beginning of the rally that uh, basically uh, brought us up to twenty. Uh, thousand dollars for the first time um, so you know I started to uh, pay attention to the price of Bitcoin mostly right uh, which is the, the, the main reason <laughs> many of us got, uh, got uh, basically attracted by um, by this thing for the first time and um, you know after digging a little bit I so I I, I was basically sending around my CV uh, to uh, all the uh, most important investment banks out there, you know, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. Uh, when I stumbled upon this web page of Goldman Sachs, uh, it was a whole website uh, on blockchain technology and Bitcoin and, and this thing. So that is when I, um, I realized that probably there was something serious uh, there, uh, when, you know, when it came to, to Bitcoin and blockchain technology. Uh, which uh, re remember we are in 2017 so that is basically the summer of the ICOs and these sort of things right the friends around uh, around all, all the other coins etc and blockchain technology and corporate uh, corporate blockchains uh, so-called uh, the, these sort of things uh, and so I got into shit cornery for um, six months something like that uh, <laughs> tricked by uh, you know, these big <laughs> institutions and their narrative around these uh, other blockchains, etc. Et uh, until I finally started to uh, following uh, seriously, uh, following in a serious manner, uh, the Twitter account of Giacomo Zucco, right? So <laughs> when, when, you, when you start following Giacomo, uh, it's very hard to, you know, remain uh, a, uh, say, a normal people, a normal person, so to speak. And so basically, slowly, slowly, by following him and uh, people <laughs> like Saifedin uh, Amus, uh, the author of the Bitcoin Standard, which, by the way, uh, so light for the first time in 20. Uh, 18 in um, probably early April or something like that. So that also uh, helped me very, very much to, you know, get out of shit cornery and really start to go, uh, start my trip into the Bitcoin uh, rabbit hole. Uh, thanks to, again, Saifedin, Giacomo and uh, the Bitcoin start, um, Standard, the famous book. Um, so... Um, and so that, that's how it started, and uh, th this is 2018. 2019, for some weird reason, I was reading Nassim Nicholas Taleb, uh, you know, which uh, was the guy who mm -hmm. wrote the, uh, how do you call it, guy, the, 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 for, the foreword for uh, um, uh, the, Bitcoin, um, uh, the Bitcoin standard, uh, the first edition. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I 
basically came to London uh, and uh, started a coffee business, right? And uh, pretty soon we uh, find ourselves uh, selling not only coffee, but also Bitcoin in the street. Uh, thanks to a okay. now, I think, legendary company uh, called Azteco, azte.co, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the voucher business, right? So we uh, became an Azteco vendor and uh, we literally had people coming from the countryside of England coming with, you know, a uh, stack of cash to <laughs> buy Bitcoin uh, without <laughs> KYC, uh, an <laughs> office stand, right? And, and we were also taking lightning payments already. This is back in, in 2019. We were literally uh, accepting lightning payments to buy coffee, right? which is something that, you know, uh, yeah, you, you've been... Were well, you well, close to you Angel? Been, um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, actually, yes. Um, let me see. Oh, we, shit. <laughs> we, we traded. I bought, been, I bought a coffee with you. <laughs> Do you remember the red he van? Bought, he bought a coffee for them. Do you remember the yeah. red van? Um, All right, unbelievable. Could unbelievable. be. Could be. I, I just remember <laughs> walking in, getting an Asseco, um voucher and getting some, that, some that delicious coffee. That might <laughs> very well be uh, us. Uh, we were trading in front of Liverpool Street Station and on the rear exit of Liverpool Street Station mm -hmm. most of the time. So, yeah. So again, uh, just to continue, we were taking <laughs> Lightning payments. So I knew since 2019 that Lightning uh, was a uh, working option, a uh, feasible option to um, really um, buy coffee and make uh, small payments with, with Bitcoin. Everything was working great, uh, already working great back in 2019. So that is mm -hmm. how I got my first interaction with, uh, with Lightning, right? Um, COVID uh, hit in 2020, we had to shut down operations, go back to Italy, uh, where I started uh, basically uh, my first Bitcoin startup. And what we were trying to do was we were trying to uh, do a, uh, make a copy of Azteco because uh, I think that, uh, I still think today that Azteco is the best uh, Bitcoin company and the, be the best Bitcoin business out there. Uh, they are doing God's work, there's no a company, in my opinion, more important than uh, Azteco at the moment. Uh, so I was trying to um, basically, again, make a copy of Azteco, but that is when we are in 2020, that is when uh, the uh, new AML uh, crypto regulation, KYC regulation mm. uh, um, was um, rolled out in Europe. So we had to scratch our plans because it was basically impossible to uh, do what uh, what Azteco was doing uh, as a uh, Europe-based startup, especially an uh, Italian-based startup where uh, the uh, AML rules are um, much uh, much tighter than they are uh, compared to places uh, like Germany, etc. Probably that's not the case anymore because we got new regulation, you know, MICA or MICA, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, that, you know, just been signed as low uh, this week or last week. So that is even tighter than it was back in 2020. So the, the one thing I like to say is that they made it impossible to start a Bitcoin startup or uh, even a crypto uh, startup in Europe. It's impossible. You need at least, if you want to be fully compliant, your first day of operations, your first your first day of business, uh, not only you have to KYC the hell out of your uh, customers, you uh, also need basically, um, and this is the case for Italy, but I think that the figure is uh, similar in other countries, you need 80,000 euros upfront just to go out on the market wow. and test your product. Yeah, because we are talking about a 50k deposit just to be uh, a, a what they call a CASP, right? Uh, which is basically a, an, an, a virtual asset uh, operator, a service provider, as they, as they call it. Um, and you need 50k for that, then you probably need uh, 10 to 20k uh, for, um, you know, to have a proper uh, AML uh, functioning uh, structure in your in your company uh, in order to be compliant and then for example in Italy you have you need to um, um, to basically 
apply for uh, another license that's going to cost you uh, seven uh, seven thousand euros so I mean, we, we are already around 80k just to start a company and there is no chance this is made uh, uh, that it, 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 there is no chance this is not made on purpose you know in order to block and prevent bitcoin business uh to uh to to see light and proliferate uh at least in europe but the same thing you had uh, ray youssef on telling you about how uh, impossible it is for american companies to serve uh basically uh, yeah. people that you know are not Americans basically and even when it comes to Americans it's very hard to serve them uh, which is uh, what we are trying to do with uh, with our company uh, at opentip.io and um, so yeah first up so just to finish the rabbit hole and my journey 2020 first startup I've been trying a couple of other business models uh, up until 2022 and finally in January 2023 we launched this company opentip.io uh, who, whose main mission is basically to uh, provide a uh, easy to use monetization tool for content creators all around the world so this is what we are currently doing uh, the feedback we are getting from uh, our users uh, including you guys are amazing and so we think we are uh, somehow on the right track to build uh, something good for uh, the world and uh, content creators uh, all over the world especially uh, the ones in the global south and uh, uh, or uh, the developing countries. If you, yeah. No, absolutely. I think you're absolutely 100% on the right track because, as you know, we've started trialing out the QR code on, on our videos. And uh, as you demonstrated on Twitter the other day, how easy it is just to throw a tip at, uh, towards any of the content creators. And it just opens up a whole potential new um, way for content creators to sort of generate um, some kind of income. Um, not just podcast uh, creators, but for musicians as well and, and anyone else. Um, they can just stick up a QR code and within a matter of seconds, you, you can you can tip them, which is an amazing functionality. So so well done on the hard work that you've done there. Um, you. Joel much, is the one that put it up originally, wasn't it, Joel? Yes, Andrea was... Um... Luckily, Andrea was always chasing me on LinkedIn because I, I usually read his DM. I totally forgot about it. <laughs> then I reread it. I was like, oh, shit, I didn't answer. Um, so it was good that you, that you um, asked again because otherwise I would have, it would have gone lost in um, the, the numerous weird right. DMs you get on LinkedIn. <laughs> you, 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 you can't give up when, you, when, you, when you're starting a startup. You always have to you know, chase your first users. Never give up. Never give up even if it doesn't scale as a strategy, but uh, it's okay. You, you got to start somewhere, right? Friends and family and then people on social media. That's sort of the exactly. way to go. <laughs> exactly. So 2019 is when you experienced lightning for the first time. And I'm saying experience because you probably sold that coffee and realized, oh, there's actually an avenue to this. Looking back from then to now, Lightning has changed massively. What has the experience been for you and now also with OpenTip, e even when you guys started earlier this year, up until now, there's so much stuff happening, mm -hmm. um, so many debates going on. We'll get into those later on. But um, how, how was the experience for you with the Lightning Network as a whole? Right. So um, one thing I had in mind, um, one of the first ideas I had back in 2019 while I was uh, taking lighting payments for coffee uh, was um, was basking for musicians right and when I was uh, mm -hmm. you know m all my free time I spend it in music club and jazz clubs all around the world where I've been uh, especially in London where you got great ones and uh, so I've always been uh, into music and very close uh, to uh, the needs and difficulties that uh, musicians and the music industry is facing, which is why with OpenTip, um, probably the first industry that we will try to target is the music industry, because we think that um, through this concept that we call online digital global basking, or uh, in the words of uh, Der Gigi, mm -hmm. the famous Bitcoiner, the value for value paradigm, right? Um, we think that the Thanks, especially thanks to Lightning, uh, we can basically 
um, mm. solve uh, the main monetization issues that musicians are facing today. Uh, and, and that is one thing. Now, going back to your question, how is that possible? The first idea I had, again, is the, this idea of musicians could start to power their videos, their performances on YouTube through lightning invoices, basically. Uh, the thing is that back in 2019, we didn't have uh, LN URL, we didn't have uh, static uh, uh, LN mm -hmm. uh, Lightning Network invoices. So basically, you couldn't build any uh, automatic Lightning app, right? It, uh, you had to create an invoice for every payment, right? You couldn't automate anything uh, related to Lightning. So that's why I originally scrapped the idea. Uh, and, you know, I, I had the chance to work with a very talented uh, software engineer, uh, which is my co-founder of OpenTip, Simone Dare, and um, you know he's always uh, up to date with all the new development, etc. And so uh, when I found out about uh, LN URL and the uh, and static uh, Lightning invoice, uh, I sort of you know uh, went back to this idea of basking for musicians and um, basically you know went to do some market research, etc., and I realized that it was basically possible to finally create automatic apps such as um, automatic tipping jar, lightning tipping jar, as in the case of uh, the QR code that mm -hmm. uh, people can see uh, uh, on your videos now. Uh, be because that is really, uh, that QR code is really uh, the the missing piece uh, of the of the digital basking experience uh, because you already I mean think about it you already have the musician performing live recorded and then the video is uploaded on YouTube right so you got uh, the YouTube viewers who are the passers-by in the um, in, in, in this uh, basking example the only thing missing was uh, the guitar case uh, widely open where the passers the passers by can uh, leave you a small tip uh, and and that is uh, the tipping jar the, the your your QR code is literally your tipping jar your page on open tip is your tipping jar uh, which uh, is a let's call it a even though in order to power this up we need to be a uh, we need to be a uh, custodian uh, app custodian solution mm -hmm. uh, we are we can say that we are a trust minimized custodian solution because thanks to LN URL uh, you have um, you basically now uh, have instant withdrawals from uh, uh, these lightning apps so and that is literally the same uh, scene that you can see in the street where you know the the, the coins uh, the one two pounds that uh, the passers by leave you don't go uh, straight into your pocket. They go first into your tipping jar, your guitar case, and then you go and take them. And this is the same experience that we think we are providing to users. Uh, and so they don't go directly into your pocket. They first go in open tip, which is your tipping jar. Um, very useful one, digital, mm -hmm. very dynamic compared to a guitar case because it gives you so many information think about the uh, you know tips tracker feature that we uh, we offer uh, but any any moment uh, you can go there and instantly withdraw uh, all the funds from the app so that's literally like and, and you know that sometimes busker do that you know they stop playing they go to the guitar case take some of the coins throw some of the money out of the case <laughs> put that in their pocket mm -hmm. and keep playing because they don't want maybe you know uh, someone else to run and come and uh, come and get the, the guitar case and their tipping jar so that you know it's uh, probably an inherent risk of basking uh, somehow although of course uh, it can be done in a um, uh, non-custodial way if uh, other than being a musician you are also a cypherpunk or a very well skilled bitcoiner which is not often the case mm. So LN URL to answer the short, right, answer yeah. to your question, the short answer to your question, the game changer for us being uh, LN URL, thanks to which you can now build automatic lighting apps. I'm just still fascinated by the listening back to your rabbit hole story in my mind. And um, essentially, you, you were orange-pilled by um, Bloomberg. 
Would that, that, would, would, that, would that be would that, would yes. that be the uh, that, that's would that be the headline? That's <laughs> and ultimately and that's ultimately brilliant. by Goldman. So, so that so there you yes. go. <laughs> or, they are paid millions of people. I, that's, 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 that's I, I guess millions of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I wanted mm-hmm. to be a banker, mm-hmm. so you know mm-hmm. I was trying to be a banker. So I, I, they say Bitcoin saved me. Yeah, and I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about that because you you studied economics, um, right? And uh, obviously, I think you were going to go into that that whole industry. What was it like being educated in in economics? Was there anything? Um, was there, was there any content around Bitcoin or any sort of cryptocurrencies, or was it just sort of um, his so the, his economics one hundred and one? Or was there any right. sort of in depth challenging conversations that, there at all? Right. Well, um, yeah. L- let me tell you that it's quite a shock. To go from the uh, you know legacy uh, economics textbooks uh, or teachings from the Austrian School of Economics, basically uh, the only thing um, related to um, to Bitcoin that I think you can uh, find in a, a, a university course all around the world is when uh, when you go to uh, micro. Uh, uh, Microeconomics 101, and they teach you about uh, temporal preferences. That is the only thing that, of course, they don't tell you. Um, they don't tell you anything meaningful uh, about this very, very important concept, which is uh, temporal preferences. Uh, that uh, you know, uh, Saifedin makes uh, an excellent job in uh, uh, you know explaining and uh, uh, really valuing that that part of um, uh, of the economics of the classical economic, economics textbook um, so that, that is the only thing but um, um, I, I can also tell you that uh, I had a sort of a uh, un- unconventional uh, journey uh, into the um, uh, into economics and um, in my in my university uh, journey basically uh, because I've always focused my my, my focus has always been on uh, uh, the People's Republic of China, right? I went to Hong Kong. I've been uh, there <clears throat> studying the Chinese financial system, etc. So um, there, um, I mean, you, I had the chance to uh, to basically to study how a um, basically how a country, a financial system, was born from scratch, right? And uh, one of the uh, one of the problem that uh, China is facing today, and you know the, uh, the central bankers in China are very very aware of that, um, is that uh, basically they are dependent from uh, the uh, from from the dollar being the uh, world reserve currency. They know uh, that that is a big issue for them. And uh, I've been, uh, you know, <laughs> one of the, uh, curiously enough, other than from Bloomberg, I've been orange peeled by Paul Krugman, because he wrote an interesting, <laughs> he wrote an, uh, he, wrote, <laughs> he wrote an interesting a- a- article on the New York Times um, called the Dollar Trap, and the Dollar Trap uh, is it was basically describing uh, the uh, the situation the. Um, uh, the bad situation in which China finds uh, finds itself in, uh, and how basically what, what is called the thrifting dilemma, uh, is really a very big issue that uh, countries face today. So when um, when I first when I got orange peel by Bloomberg for the first time, I immediately made the link between this big uh, uh, issue, this the thrifting dilemma. Uh, and uh, how Bitcoin could be uh, a solution to that dilemma, and how Bitcoin can basically be used as the world reserve currency. Uh, and you know, I was into academia at that time, as I was writing um, uh, papers uh, to be published on scientific journals. Uh, and you know, Bitcoin at the beginning, uh, when back in 2017, when I first heard of it and started to study it, and after reading Saifedin, I thought that. Um, it was a nice topic to write a scientific paper uh, about. Uh, so uh, and we and eventually winning the, Dom- the Nobel Prize thanks to it. So that was my <laughs> mindset back in, in in 2018. Now of course 
then you you realize that whole the whole academia uh, world is is a scam and i just and that you just want to be very very far away from it and that is the first thing that my university professor uh, which i was working with told me andrea uh, academia uh, i mean they try they try to screw me in these uh, in the italian academia and in the european uh, academia sphere and so stay away from it and try to go, go, run away as, as soon as you can uh, that was his first that, that has been my first yep. impression with the academia my professor which is a, a renewed academic told me andrea stay away from this uh, environment which is very toxic uh, and uh, you don't want to get uh, you don't want to have any part in it so yep. w- w- the question was uh, what was the question uh, the original question was <laughs> we drifted oh, yeah. apart a bit but okay no, yeah yeah no, no the question was about the uh, economics background and I-, I hope that you know answer your your question uh, I mean, it, it's mostly a shock. It does, but also we ventured into your your Chinese, um, your experience in Hong Kong, right. and and I'm I'm curious, and I always have been curious, and maybe you can have uh, give me an insight now that you've had that experience about what what the Chinese economic structure looks like and how it might differ from everywhere else. Is there a different attitude and and approach to economics than anywhere else in your experience in China? Well, um, well, they they are trying to build a uh, financial system very, very akin to the one we have. Uh, of course, there are differences, yeah. especially in terms of um, how do you call them? In terms of, um, uh, I mean, it's not. There, there is a big uh, presence, of course, of uh, of the state uh, in the economy. Um, so, you know, the biggest company there are the so-called state-owned enterprises (SOEs), uh, and they mm. they they are a big part of the Chinese economy uh, still today. But on the other end, uh, I can tell you that China is a much more capitalist uh, country than the United States are. Because entrepreneur, and especially, I mean, not compare, not even uh, any comparison with Europe, which is, uh, you know, straight, uh, straight out socialist uh, hole now uh, where we are living in. But uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship, China, uh, I mean, being an entrepreneur in China is much, much easier um, than being an entrepreneur in Europe for sure, and in many cases. Uh, also compared to the United States. So they really foster entrepreneurship and make it easy to start a business and run a business. Uh, so they uh, they learn that uh, very well from us uh, uh, while, and, and you know, and they really um, bet on, you know, that, that part of capitalism while on the other hand here, we in the West, we are forgetting uh, that, you know, entrepreneurs are the main force behind uh, human development, economic development, uh, as, is, as is, you know, the case in Bitcoin. Uh, if it wasn't for entrepreneurs, we, uh, we, 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 will, we would never see adoption of Bitcoin because uh, ultimately it's Bitcoin products that um, basically get people uh, on boarded to, to, to Bitcoin. And nothing else. Uh, it's nothing else. It's only the product built by entrepreneurs. And so, um, yeah, uh, I always, mm. uh, you know, go uh, away from your question, try to get into bitcoins. <laughs> but yeah, no China. Worries. No uh, worries. I mean, they, they are trying to. Uh, they are really trying to 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 build a financial system that is very similar to uh, to the one you can see in the United States. Uh, but of course, they want to retain a high degree of control. Uh, both on the uh, on the uh, mid space economy, but also on the uh, financial uh, markets. Uh, now I can tell you all sorts of funny story on financial Chinese financial markets and stock markets, etc. But we probably don't have time for that. Because I know that China is um, attempting to challenge the US dollar um, mm-hmm. by teaming up with Russia. And um, where, where, where's the other place? Help me out, guys. It's called oh. BRICS, Ian. It's a bit more than like two countries. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 I was yeah. going to list yeah, them, Brit- but then I had a, a senior moment, Joel. 
<laughs> yeah, they, they are trying together with exactly with big countries. So with Brazil now that they have Lula elected, which is a very uh, a very big fan of Xi Jinping, uh, and um, and they and the uh, United United Arab Emirates. So this is exactly what I was talking about um, earlier. And so China knows that they need to break this dependency from the U.S. dollar. And that is probably the that, that is the whole uh, the whole reason behind what is called the Belt and Road Initiative um, throughout uh, the whole uh, Asian continent. But you know they uh, they or they are also present in the Mediterranean Sea. Even in Italy, uh, we we had uh, mm. Italian officials mm. sort of colluding with uh, Chinese officials in order to get Chinese money money and Chinese investment. Uh, in, 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 into, mm. uh, into our country uh, and that is the case pretty much uh, in every country where um, you know Chinese uh, the Chinese um, Communist Party basically try to influence um, foreign uh, states and try to you know be friends with them to almost to buy their friendship in a way uh, but and but mm. th- that is only one thing the real the real reason is that they want to uh, basically, get other countries to start make uh, cross-border payments in Chinese yuan, which is the ultimate goal, because that is how yep. they break the dollar hegemony, and that is, you know, a very, very long-term plan uh, that the Chinese had mm. since uh, 2000, uh, I think 2008, when a paper from the former head of the Central Bank of the People's uh, Bank of China. Uh, his name is uh, Xu Xiao Xiao Chuan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there is a whole paper. I, I, actually, it's only three pages long, but um, it's very uh, straight to the point paper uh, where he basically uh, makes the case for uh, this uh, exorbitant privilege of the of the dollar and why China needs to break this uh, privilege and dependency. So, um, yeah, they are. Trying with and, as hard as can to, to do that, especially if you bring it back to Bitcoin. Uh, I know a lot of people in uh, Africa, like Nigeria, some in Kenya, um, and a few in Zimbabwe and South Africa, who've told me that you know the the sort of contracting bodies in China, and these are giant shipment containers, um, companies who work in logistics. They're sort of playing the devil's advocate game. So they obviously have to work with the CCP and all of these things. But then at the same time, they pay their international uh, partners in Africa in Bitcoin, because it's literally the easiest way of getting the liquidity out and in without a big um, influence by the Chinese firewall. And I think this is the best case example for yeah, it's, it's quite. I can uh, send you a link later on with a brilliant yeah, interview with someone in Nigeria who was explaining that in detail. Yeah, you sort of would think, okay, if it's China, you would think that would be a digital push by um, their version of the CBDC, right? But apparently, um, they do a lot of that in Bitcoin. And you kind of see this if you go and speak with miners in China as well. Um, you have more experiences this way than if you than what you think if you would speak to people in Europe, for example. Over right. here, it's sort of looked down at, but smiled at. And over there, they really use it. Um, but that would be the best case scenario for Lightning. And to bring it back to with OpenTip, you mentioned it beforehand with the custody part. Obviously, if Lightning is, and I'm calling it out with a big if, the solution to uh, mass adoption, bring people in and really bring Bitcoin into everyday life situations, you have to somehow find a middle common ground where people who do not want to self custody and there are people like this out there uh, that they still have an option was that the main reason why you guys went right we we do offer our way the way we do it um or did you persuade other options of how you want to offer your product well of course uh joel we tried to uh to see whether it was possible or not to go um uh, to you know, mm. roll out the product in a non-custodial fashion, uh, but the reality is that uh, any non-custodial Lightning app that you can currently find on the market doesn't have uh, the same, uh, let's let's say, the same beautifully free, user-friendly experience that applications such as Wallet of Satoshi uh, or Pine Wallet. Mm-hmm. Or uh, 
you know, the uh, the Zebedee wallet uh, are currently offering to to their to their users. So there is currently really no way to uh, offer automatic Lightning apps uh, in a non-custodial fashion. There is no way. I mean, when you got people such as Matt Hoddle uh, on Twitter and other uh, prominent Bitcoiners and OGs of the space complaining about how hard it is to keep and man maintain their Lightning infrastructure, and they do mm -hmm. that publicly uh, on Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what 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 what? chance can a normal a normal guy have to start like that because you know you got many uh, many bitcoiners or let's say several bitcoiners that basically uh, would, would rather uh, uh, see uh, people uh, not using bitcoin than uh, uh, using bitcoin in a custodial fashion and I think that that is madness, and that is one of the biggest fights that I think uh, we uh, we will have to fight internally, uh, uh, internally uh, within the Bitcoin community, uh, because you know th these people are crazy, and m in my opinion, and most of the time they have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, I would like to mention these. Uh, yep. A uh, very insightful article by um, some of the guys at Swan uh, uh, called The Bullish Case for um, Custodial Lightning or, or something like that. You can find that on their blog. And, you know, they clearly uh, explain uh, why. Also, they explain it mathematically, um, uh, do, crunching numbers. Uh, and providing you with uh, with uh, evidences that uh, it's impossible to scale Bitcoin to eight billion people without custodian solutions, and that is basically the whole bet uh, that people as Swan are doing, uh, that we are doing, that Wallet of Satoshi is doing, and you know all the all that all that segment of the Bitcoin industry that is currently trying uh, to prioritize mass adoption because. Uh, Again, I think we are running sort of uh, out of time because today we have CBDCs that are actually try uh, to compete with Bitcoins, uh, with Bitcoin at least in terms of narrative and the way they present themselves to the public. Uh, and um, it's obvious to anyone, especially Bitcoiners, that the public is easily uh, it's easy to influence, especially when you know um, you got certain. Uh, ideas and certain narratives coming from the state or the central bank or mainstream media, etc. So uh, there is no doubt that people will start using these CBCs. Yep. And so I think that uh, the race has started basically. And now it's, uh, you know, time is also a factor that we have to consider. It's not 2017 anymore when uh, you got, uh, you know, people and the establishment that are just you know waking up to bitcoin uh, they know what's coming that's why china banned bitcoin because the communist party knows very well that it might be the end of the communist party uh, so that's why they banned it and you know people uh, central bankers know that very well and the right politicians know that very well so it's a race we need to and, and by the way it's not only that i mean there's nothing bad uh, to um to, to provide uh, people uh, the, uh, the option to use a custodian for 1,000 reasons because you know, not, not, not everyone wants to, uh, to self-custody, uh, not everyone wants to get uh, his mm -hmm. hands dirty with you know, uh, cypherpunk stuff and that's okay, uh, uh, th there's no problem with that. I mean, I think that now the question is, uh, either CBDCs or uh, basically custodian lightning apps when it comes to consumer applications, when it comes to payments. Because I like, uh, now in my mind, I'm basically uh, dividing uh, cypherpunk, cypherpunk Bitcoin versus consumer Bitcoin, which is an expression used by the CEO of Azteco, Akin Fernandez. Um, I mean, one thing is 
uh, you know, the guy that is buying thousands of Bitcoin and wants to self custody, but even that case, that guy might want to self custody half of his funds and half have them with Swan or BitGo, whatever, or any other custodian. Uh, because there are a thousand, a thousand issues if you think about it just for a minute with self custody. I mean, what happens if you die? Do you have a, a uh, you know, an inherent, how do you call it, like, um, in, in, in what was the word when, when you, uh, in, uh, a way to pass your assets to, you know, in your inherit? Exactly. You need to have a plan for that. Uh, and not many people have that. And, you know, it's not even easy to set that up so there are uh, you know there are many trade offs to consider and custody solutions uh, i mean they they have to be a thing in order to to, to have mass adoption um, and you know it's mm. very interesting to listen to to Akin fernandez because uh, he went very deep into the history of consumer software and the way um, the way uh, to which they uh, basically went from uh, from zero to to mass usage, uh, and you know, he makes the example of WhatsApp, right? Uh, so people started mm -hmm. to use end-to-end -end encryption without even knowing that they were using. It. And I think that uh, that is the same kind of user experience that we should try to uh, to um, say to to obtain with Bitcoin products. I mean, it, it has. I mean. You, you should be using Bitcoin without even using that and that without even knowing that. And that is what we are trying to do with OpenTip. I mean, uh, when I go to musicians and try to onboard them to this uh, online digital global basking movement, uh, I don't I don't waste time to explain to them about, you know, self custody, Bitcoin, blockchain, lightning versus versus social. They don't know and they don't want to know anything about it. They don't have time. They don't have the mind for that. The journey is you start accepting Bitcoin tips. Once you see the tips coming in, there is when you start, you know, to eventually uh, dig a little bit deeper. And you know, okay, it's not uh, ten dollars, a hundred dollars. It's a thousand dollars on this account. Uh, what, sh what, what should I do with this money? Uh, how can I move them around, uh, etc. So uh, it's something that it's it's a journey that uh, every person on the planet has to uh, basically um, go through before you reach the uh, cypherpunk enlightenment so to speak and uh, <laughs> become a, yep. a real samurai so to speak and i guess you know um this is obviously i got it in 2013 and you know you 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 immediately got started with self custody but then very quickly even in 2015 or 16, I first heard about a Bitcoin bank or something along these lines. And um, in the back of my head, it made sense because, yes, people are lazy. Some people are stupid. Can't say it any other way. Um, they're not able to protect their keys. The beauty is you can always get there. And, and my personal belief, also being driven as a kid who grew up on the Internet, is you should always make sure to, you know, Secure your channels, for example, through end-to-end -end encryption. If you if you message important stuff back and forth, um, you need to find a way to protect your rights, whether that be property rights, uh, digital rights, whatever. Um, and Bitcoin literally offers this. I'm not downplaying the fact that people use custody because it is an easier step to onboard. But I think it's then once people are on board, it's like you say, they get those few tips in, and um, they realize what's going on. And then they go like. Hmm, maybe there is more to it. And I think that's where the Bitcoin community has to improve massively. We can't always be orange pilling everyone 24 seven. We can't always be talking about monetary policy, why uh, the Fed needs to burn and all of these things. But we can start with like, hey, I can now send you um, four cents instantly, no intermediary, no fees involved or almost none. Um, and we can do that back and forth just to test it. You can get the tips going. And once they get that, you go, right, so that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. Now we're going to go down and really teach you that you have to basically reclaim that money. Um, because, Andrea, interestingly, Lightning, for you, is it an IOU or is it Bitcoin? For me, it's Bitcoin because you are effectively using Bitcoin to mm -hmm. make purchases. 
there's no the, the, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what, what what it is to me it's uh, uh the uh the monetary effect it has and so uh you know there is um uh, again going back to the ceo of asteco if you ask him is bitcoin money is gonna mm -hmm. answer no bitcoin is not money bitcoin is a database which has a monetary effect right so if you are using Lightning uh, through Wallet of Satoshi to make payments, uh, and especially cross-border cross -border payments, you are using the uh, monetary effect of Bitcoin. And so you are effectively using Bitcoin as money, and so uh, you are using Bitcoin to, uh, I mean, according to your needs. And that is, I think, what should be, at least currently, the, the aim uh, because again um, it is not only uh, CBDCs etc I mean we want people to uh, start mm -hmm. uh, to appreciate Bitcoin start using Bitcoin uh, get them off the the fiat drugs and you know slowly um, start to uh, to realize the uh, the Bitcoin that uh, the, 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 the potential of Bitcoin in any uh, in any form, being them you know a centralized uh, uh, solution, uh, as uh, in the case of uh, Wallet of Satoshi, um, or in the form of Samurai Wallet or Sparrow Wallet, you know these more uh, privacy-oriented uh, solutions, which of course uh, are not the best for uh, maybe uh, under a um, user experience point of view, uh, but you know it's good to have uh, to have the option there. We, we need the option and most people uh, I am for that, that might even be unfortunate whatever but I think that most people are gonna go for a cast a custodial solution at least in you know the the, the, the near the near term the foreseeable futures because um, I mean I, me and my company we're gonna be the first to roll out a non-custodial solution and we are already thinking about it and working on it as soon as it gets uh, feasible. And, you know, it simply is not at the moment, especially if you are building a consumer product and if your aim is to onboard uh, no coiners. With Wallet of Satoshi, I can literally onboard anybody while drunk at the pub. And I did that. You can't, you can't do that with Breeze. You can't do that with with uh, with other uh, wallet. You, you can't do that. While right? you can onboard anybody with wallet or Satoshi drunk at the pub, I can assure you that. I can even onboard them on mm. Open Tip. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, I understand. And and by the way, guys, the article that uh, Andrea was referring to is called "The Bullish Case for Bitcoin Custodians," and it was uh, written by Swan Bitcoin. We we'll put we'll the um, yeah, and we we'll put the link in the the show notes. And essentially. To summarize what you just said, I th I, th I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, CBDCs are right behind us, and we really need to get our skates on and and implement, um, you know, something that's easy for people to use and and and, and to onboard them. And over time, like, because we we've been early in Bitcoin, and we've got the time to fall around and sort of like, you know, scratch behind, uh, scratch underneath the surface, and 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 tinker a little bit, and and we've got more time on our hands before like the mass hyper Bitcoinization comes, and and people are you know they, they we're simple creatures, we like convenience, and and the convenience of having this custodial. Um, means of, of of having your 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 transactions done on these platforms is 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 the quickest and easiest way to onboard people within the the Bitcoin space. Is that in in essence what you're you're trying to say, Andrea? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that, or have that, I completely that, misunderstood you? No, that, <laughs> that, that that's what I'm saying. And uh, you know, another thing we are trying to do um, with Open Tip is to pro is to provide. Uh, especially the Western man with a meaningful use case for Bitcoin because you know while the remittances might be a very cool use case for uh, people in developing countries uh, I mean if you if you go and look at what people are doing in Europe and uh, uh, and the United States or rich countries is basically trading speculation that is what we're doing we are not making payments we are not buying stuff we are not doing anything else uh, so uh, through basking 
and basking has always been a thing. You you can still uh, see basking in action in any tube station in London, probably today, in New York, whatever. Uh, people, you know, th there is this uh, uh, sort of inherent uh, proclivity towards uh, making donations and leaving tips and support your favorite artists, and that has always been the case. Uh, and so we think that uh, through a new paradigm, uh, a paradigm shift, uh, such as uh, the value for value paradigm, uh, the uh, this concept of online digital global basking, we are basically giving uh, a chance to first of all fix uh, uh, a, a an industry plagued with the uh, uh, with a monetization problem, which is the music industry. So if you imagine imagine thinking that uh, I mean imagine your favorite your favorite artist starts accepting Bitcoin tips, you are a Bitcoiner. What's the first thing you do? You send him a tip. Because you want to support him, you want mm. to support Bitcoin, you want to create a, a, a successful story, a success story, these sort of things. So I think that basking could be the first real meaning, meaningful use case uh, that you know people in the West can understand. Of course, we would like to see uh, the flow of money go, going from the north, um, the north to 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 the global south, right? So rich people in Europe and uh, America tipping uh, creators in Africa, South America. Far East, these places. So this is also a thing that uh, we we hope to uh, to create, right? I mean, it's it's not only uh, it's not only a matter of uh, CBDCs are uh, behind our back. We need to hurry. It's also uh, a matter of you know uh, show people uh, what what's possible now with with Bitcoin. And we think that the use case of digital basking is a very important one. And according to uh, the value for value paradigm, uh, we are basically realigning incentives uh, of content creators and um, uh, content consumers. Uh, and what I'm saying is basically that today content creators are uh, basically the incentive for them today is clicks, views, clickbait titles, these sort of things. They don't care about the content very much anymore. Uh, because they are optimizing for clicks and attention. They are not optimizing uh, for beauty and, uh, uh, and value of their content. They, they don't care about it because the monetization, um, uh, the monetization um, uh, structure is, uh, is not optimizing for value. While in the case of basking, uh, the only reason you leave a tip, you support your artist, is because you really love what he's doing, and this is true in in, in the ter in in, uh, in the case of yeah. music, is true in the case of uh, journalism, uh, books, so many things, content creation in general. So we, you know, we can also there's a, there's a very interesting mm. article from their Gigi called the freedom of of value. Uh, that is worth reading. It's interesting because Joelle and I had a conversation offline uh, a few days ago on the back of the QR code and things. And we're, we're trying to think of ideas of how to generate content um, that's been um, guided by our listeners. So we, we want to try and sort of see if there's a way that we can give people what it is that they're, they, they want um, because they're the ones you know, tipping us, you know, and, and hopefully we can drive the content direct to the people that are listening. Um, and I think that's we a good use case for, for covered, you know, yeah. that's, that's the idea that we got to go. Let, let me interrupt you just a second. Top man, because, thank you very much. Let me interrupt just a second. No, because, no, carry you know, on. We, we, we lightning, uh, other than Satoshi's or beats, uh, you got also these, uh, this fight going on uh, between beats and <laughs> sats. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> together, together with sats or beats on the lightning network, you can send a message. So uh, one of the next feature we are going to roll out on OpenTip is that together with the tip, you will also be able to read the message that comes with the tip because uh, it's not currently implemented on the app, but uh, that is a, a wonderful way to uh, create interaction between the fan base and the content creator. Because with the tip, you know, this is basically basking 2.0 
uh, for uh, instances like this. And so the fact that together with uh, your two, uh, the two pounds coin, you, you cannot leave a message or maybe you can, you can, you know, wrap the coin around a, a, a page or something like that and write it. But it's not, it's not what happens. While we lightning, uh, you can send a tip, a message, a feedback, uh, a critic, whatever, to your favorite content creator. And that is another thing that really is going to make basking, uh, digital blah basking, uh, a, a thing and apps um, such as Open Tip, uh, very very important apps and you know apps that can play an important role. Lightning can play a very important mm. role in the whole uh, content creation yep. economy. Nice. I think I think that's a that's a good word to end it. <laughs> All right. Uh, always got to add on a positive note, right? Um, <laughs> Andrea, we, we'll definitely link um, the articles and stuff mentioned um, in the show notes. Uh, where's the best place to find you and Open Tip? Awesome. All right. So uh, you can find Open Tip at OpenTip.io. That's our website. Or but you can also find us on mm -hmm. Twitter. Um, open tip underscore io is the handle mine is andrea pireda hk um i'm not gonna spell it <laughs> so that, 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 like I said, you, you could probably find my name in the description on the youtube right. video. It's like in the show notes <laughs> right and um and also on linkedin uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, start an instagram account soon but uh, that is where you can find me and open tip uh for now brilliant guys andrea thank everything. you so much for joining us here at rabbit hole stories um it's been a wonderful exploration and um, I hope to see you again on the show soon. You're now a friend of the show and you're more than welcome to come back anytime. And uh, no doubt there's a QR code sitting somewhere on this video if you're watching us on, on YouTube. So um, why not try out the uh, open tip um, right. for the first time here today give okay. us some feedback and uh, let us know the sort of content you want us to do can i ask you one last question what percentage Adrian. of your what, what percentage of your listeners do you think is uh, a bitcoiner and what percentage do you think is not a bitcoiner I've, i'd say we're pretty high up with bitcoiners um 70 30 maybe 70 30 well le let me uh, try to um, you know convey one last message and maybe also a little suggestion for you because uh, one of the I think new things Thank we you. are trying to do with with open tip is uh, again the main mission is to onboard uh, normal people now not be corners even though most of our users are of course be corners like yourselves but what we are trying to do is uh, to get normal content creators so no coiners content creators uh, to use open tip but also the the main challenge we we face here is how do the fan base can send a tip how can they tip their favorite uh, supporter right so uh, for example in your videos you are currently placing one qr code which is a lightning invoice a static lightning invoice which you can basically interact with only if you already have a Bitcoin wallet. If I if if I'm a non Bitcoiner and I scan your um, uh, your QR code with my camera, nothing happens. Um, that's why we are basically and this is some, something that some of our users are doing on other podcasts. Uh, they are basically placing two QR codes on on their videos. One is for the Lightning invoice, and the other one is basically a QR code that is going to link to your creator page on OpenTip, where we provide your fan base with any explanation relevant to make their, their first tip. And uh, last week, we came up with uh, this, uh, let's call it the ultimate guide to go from no corner to big corner with Sats in his wallet in five minutes. And it goes like this. First, first step, you download Wallet of Satoshi. The second step, you can now buy a stack of vouchers on two websites, websites currently. One is g2a.com uh, and the other one is Kingwin. Uh, we suggest you go on, on G2A and in five minutes, in a no KYC fashion, you can buy your, your first Azteco voucher from 200 countries, basically, or something like that. No KYC, no documents asked. You can buy an Azteco voucher with your card, redeem it straight into your wallet of Satoshi, and it literally takes five minutes to do so. And you got your wallet uh, with, a with a 
top up in Satoshis ready to send you uh, a tip. So I think that this kind of very simple, small things, step-by-step uh, -step guides are really going to be uh, very, very important when it comes to onboarding people and especially when it comes to the fan basis of content creators because it's not only, okay, I got my Bitcoin tip in jar, it's also I do explain to my fan base how to tip me from scratch and today is possible thanks to this voucher of Azteco. It wasn't possible until a couple of months ago, it's now possible, uh, it's, an, it's the best way to buy Bitcoin without KYC and I would take advantage of this, uh, op of this option if I were you, uh, really anybody. So do it, do it, do it. Uh, and uh, guys, you might also consider to place two QR codes that redirect to your OpenT page where, you know, the people can find all the explanation five minutes from no corner to be corner with that. Nice. So you'd have definitely have two QR codes today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, it was great having you on. <laughs> Nice, and uh, uh, I hope to uh, maybe see you soon at a conference or definitely back on the show. Let's see. Let's see. Thanks for having me, uh, guys. Uh, I take a great deal of pride to be considered a friend of the show. So uh, th th thank you very much indeed, guys. Hopefully I'll see you soon in Midspace as well. It's been our pleasure. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Adios. Ciao, ciao. Arrivederci.